Since I'm stuck indoors, I decided it'd be a great time to make a video about the electric bike I built last summer. This is the final product after I converted my mom's 26 inch cruiser bike. It uses a 500 watt BLDC motor with an integrated 10 amp 42 volt controller and it's the perfect combination as it acts more of an electric assist than a fully electric bike. The installation and assembly was simple, as you drop in the wheel into your bike's axle, install the torque arm, and wire up the sensors and throttle to the desired location. A torque arm is essential in an electric bike as it prevents the torque from the motor, stripping the inserts of your bike, and prevents the nuts holding the wheel in place from loosening. The kit came with a 3 amp hour 10S battery that's BMS controlled, but the cells inside of it could not handle the amp draw, resulting in performance sag, up hills and an effective range of only 4 kilometers. To overcome this, I purchased the battery pack off AliExpress that has 40 cells in a 10S 4P configuration, meaning 10 rows of 4 batteries. It costed 115 Canadian dollars plus 10 dollars for shipping. The cells inside the batteries are most certainly recycled to achieve this low price, but with that being said, 18650 batteries have a lifespan of about 600 charges, so they would still work for a long period of time. To house it, I used a waterproof gun case and cut holes for the charger and power plug. Heat does not seem to be a problem either as the battery is more than capable of handling the 10 amps peak that the bike draws. The battery display as you can observe is very inaccurate and tells little to no information. For that I got a $7 power meter off eBay. It uses a dot matrix display and slideshows through information, giving me information about voltage, amp, wattage draw, watt hours, amp total, lowest voltage, and peak amp draw. This meter in conjunction with a GPS trip meter on my cell phone allows me to accurately calculate my range and point of return. To mount it, I 3D printed a holder that fits perfectly onto the meter and mounts perfectly onto the bike. I also added a pedal assist sensor, or a PAS, that allows a sensor with a magnet rotating around the gear to detect movement. This was the most useless thing I bought, as the only thing it detected was the presence of motion, not the speed at which I pedaled at. In layman's terms, when I pedaled it, it just spun up to 100%. As you can imagine, that's not very helpful, so I plug it in whenever I need to use it. Some of the other things I added were aluminum pedals, as the old ones were too cheap, an aluminum rack to hold the battery along with other cargo if needed, and a super comfortable seat that has springs in it to act as suspension. With all these upgrades, this bike tops out at around 27 km per hour with 25 km of range. This exceeds its purpose as its intended purpose was just to assist the rider while pedaling. I am satisfied with how this project turned out as it only costed $600 with all the extra parts and batteries I added. If you do decide to replicate my build, I would strongly advise against using a steel frame and using an aluminum frame. Aluminum is one third of the weight of steel with its strength to weight ratio similar to steel. But aluminum is significantly more expensive than steel, costing almost two times more. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. My next video is going to be on the X-Way Flex, which has been delayed because of the pandemic we're in.